raindrops on roses, and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. <coughs> Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells, and fits all with noodles, while kids can fly with the moon on their wings. Okay. okay. <laughs> favorite things. Oh, that's gonna be stuck in your head. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put my favorite things down. Okay, so <laughs> thank you guys for coming. I know we're a little goofy. It's our last Zoom classroom. We're getting a little goofy. <laughs> thank getting. you guys. So <laughs> thank you guys for joining us and coming back and joining us for uh, almost a year. We've been doing these. <laughs> that's been a long time. So we'll get started with my favorite things in just a second, but we'll go over quickly those. Those pesky rules. So you guys are muted for everybody's sanity. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help much over here. Gonna be asking you guys questions. Put your answers in the chat. If you have questions for me. I got Megan here and I got Linda helping us here too. And you have questions for us, put those in the QA. And at the end, after I've given you my top 10 favorite things, I'm gonna ask you guys for yours. What are your favorite animal facts that you find fascinating? Because that's why I did this program. That's why I'm an educator, <laughs> or I was a zookeeper too. I find animals and nature just fascinating. There's so many cool things to talk about. So it was really hard to just pick 10. <laughs> so, but these are kind of my 10 favorite, you know, go-to facts and animal cool things that I go to if I can just pick whatever animals I want. These are the ones I go to. And my first one, number 10, favorite thing, is this guy. I love talking about this right here. Do you guys know what animal this is? I'm sure I've brought him out. Oh, what is this thing? Does anybody else have an um, hear microphone? Us? How's the sound quality, guys? Yeah, let us know. Put us that feedback in chat. Can you hear us? Let us know if you can hear us. Ooh. Oh, somebody said I got an elephant. So apparently you can hear us. <laughs> Look. Elephant, good guess. It is big. It's very large. Sounds good on your end. Okay. All right. If you're having issues, so it sounds like our stuff is working. If you're having issues, sometimes it helps to kind of log out and then come back in. Sometimes that helps with the sound. <laughs> sometimes. <Yeah. laughs> That's my, my go to thing. Technology. Turn it, off, turn it back on. <laughs> All right. What do we got? So we got elephant, rhino, rhino, lion. Some good guesses. Big, yeah. Well, this guy. Remember, we we learn a lot what they eat. What they eat. So this guy obviously has big canine teeth for eating other animals. I'll give you another hint. He's found where it's really, really cold. And look how big that nose look at is. That giant nose. And we also have another guess. So if he lives up where it's cold. He eats other animals. He's a hunter of other animals. Hmm. And polar bear. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> this is my go to fact about polar bears. I think this is the most fascinating thing. Let's see if any of you guys have ever heard, because I know I'm surely I have mentioned it <laughs> in many of the different classrooms. Does anybody know how far away a polar bear can smell its food in miles? Guess in miles. How many miles away? Can a polar bear smell its food with that giant nose? And then I guess is, I'm gonna zoom mm. in so you can look Caroline inside. Five. Oh, she's changed her answer to 10. <laughs> now it says five. Five, nice, okay. Mm. Four, I think it says four, yeah. four miles, okay. Nice. Actually, 20 guys, two, zero. What? 20 miles away. <laughs> That's why it's my favorite. That's so amazing. Could you imagine walking outside and being able to smell your favorite food from miles away? <laughs> of course, then you'd be able to smell everything. <laughs> your your maybe your neighbor that didn't shower in the last mm. few days. I maybe mean, that's such a good thing. But pretty cool because if you think about it, they live on this big white flat area. Their food is under the ice. The seals hide under the ice. 
And the only time they come up for air is they come up with those holes in the ice to take a breath and they have to know where to go. And so they have to have a really good sense of smell to be able to find maybe those, those holes in the ice so they know where to hunt for those seals. And also to find boyfriends and girlfriends, right? So they have to be able to smell, have a really good smell, sense of smell to be able to find things because everything's white, everything blends in. It's hard to see that stuff. So having a great sense of smell will help you find your food. Pretty cool, right? That's one of my favorite. Oh, <laughs> is that my shirt? Number nine is my favorite things. And I know the song you got stuck in your head, right? Stuck in our head. We've been singing it. Oh, did you want to do it? Sorry. I don't care. You're fine. Sorry, you can get the next it's, one. Yeah. It's... I just got, I got so excited. You're, yes, you did. I, I'm glad you're getting excited about her. <laughs> Hi, David. You want to come out and say Hi. Oh, she's like, oh, this again. There we go. <laughs> Hi, sweet girl. Here we go. Mm. These oh. are one of my favorite things. Actually, it's here. I can go down. This this end. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't see any eyes back here, Nikki. No, it's all right. I wanted to talk about the the hairs on our backside. <laughs> Or the fun, fancy word, urticating hairs. Can you spell that in there in chat for them? Sure you can, Megan. Megan can do it. Yeah. <laughs> urticating. It's just a fun word to say, too. But that basically means they have these kind of hairs on her backside, as you can see right there, that almost have like, not quite like fish hooks, but they have hooks on the end. So those tiny little hairs, so something were to come eat Miss Gwen here, our Chilean rose tarantula, she would kick those hairs off this end right here with those back legs and she would shoot them out and they would go into that animal's eyes, nose, mouth, anything like that. And I don't know if you guys, if you've ever had a hair in your, in hair in your eye or anything in your eye for that matter. Yep. Oh, that's the worst thing, worst feeling in the world. It's very weird. <laughs> it is. So that's a pretty good way of protecting yourself. So those urticating hairs is how she uses or how she protects herself. Look at mm -hmm. her. She's so, so cute. Good girl. She's so chill. Right, Claire. I'm coming down to you. So you can kind of see why she's called a Chilean rose. Let me come. Oh, wrong way. Yep. <laughs> Chilean <laughs> rose tarantula. She kind of has a pinkish tinge to her. Let's see if I can get her on one hand. Here we go this part right there a little bit of a pinkish tinge oops sorry that's just my hand <laughs> right that way uh, there we go <laughs> <laughs> thank you so that rose tarantula and she's so chill a lot of people have them as pets because this is what they do you just hang out in your hand and she's one of my first the type of um one of the first tarantulas i've actually handled was a chilean rose and so they gave a Gave me a good sense of confidence <laughs> for handling other tarantulas because they're just so chill. She's and I definitely lost the, my fear of handling yeah. tarantulas because of them. She's definitely the calmest one that we have in our yeah, education program. Absolutely. So there's those urticating ears, and there's her spinnerets on the back. <laughs> and that's what she uses to make her silk and her webs. Yep. And then she uses all those other hairs too, kind of as sense organs. So she feels. She can smell with her hairs too. So tarantula hairs, a lot of, they do a lot of things for them. You guys have any questions about Miss Gwen? I'm not seeing And remember you can put your questions in the Q and A section. And any kind of questions you got. Yep. <laughs> Gwen or not, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Or not. I keep forgetting which direction I go. I <laughs> I don't know if you guys can kind of see. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So these, oh, leave my finger back. Right there are her eyes. <laughs> She's like, no. So like, don't look. touch me. Okay, which way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. Yeah, okay. Those right there are her eyes. <laughs> She's got eight of them and they're tiny. So she doesn't use her eyesight for much. It's Oops. those hairs. That really kind of help her sense her world. So Renee wants to know, do, do tarantulas bite or sting? Ah, good question. So they don't bite because they don't really have big mouth parts, but they do have fangs 
that they can inject venom in them, but most spiders, their venom is kind of like um, being stung by a bee. So it's gonna hurt because some of those things are really big, <laughs> but you're not gonna die from it, that's for sure. So unless you know you have an allergy to something that's in their toxin, then you just get yourself to the hospital and get that taken care of. But no, so yeah, she can, but she usually yeah. doesn't. And we know the warnings of when she's gonna, she's not feeling up to being handled. Yeah. She lets us know. And we just like, okay, <laughs> you get to have a day off. <laughs> um, Leah wants to know how old is she? So I do believe Gwen is, you remember five? I want to say she's around maybe three to five somewhere there. <laughs> she's on the young side because we had some older ones that were about 10 or so. And I think she's on the younger side. So I think I want to say she's somewhere between three and five. Um, and Kenneth says, what's that hole in her back? So, so it's the, no, I think it's the, I'm talking about these right back here. That dark the, spot right there. That, those are her spinnerets. It's kind of hard to see them, but there's actually two little appendages that stick out that she can, right now she's got them held up into her body. Go back towards the middle of her body, right there. It's the center of her, okay. I, think it, I think that's the. Yeah, I don't know. That's just, I think we're yeah. just part of her back. Yeah, yeah. just the way her exoskeleton and yep. everything's put together. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions? Nope, not seeing any. All right, thank you, Gwen. All right, yeah. going back up on the camera. All right, let's see if I can get her. <laughs> She's pretty comfortable in my hand. Hey, it's funny because sometimes these little uh, invertebrates are hard to get off of your hands with the gloves on. They <laughs> like to cling to you. Yeah, little nails on the end of their feet too that help them grasp onto things. But my favorite things about her when she when she's really comfortable. She will start spinning a web you'll have in your hand and until you all of a sudden you see the little web around your hand. I'm like, oh, she likes me. <laughs> in my mind, anyways. <laughs> all right, my favorite number, eight. I went away earlier. <laughs> I'll see if you guys can guess what animal this is. First, I'm gonna hold it up. What animal do you think this is from? Hmm. What do you guys think? Come closer. That's wow. In. Look at those patterns. Anybody got any guesses? Ooh, Caroline jaguar, says jaguar yeah. leopard. That's a good guess. Yep. Yeah, they kind of have a lot of spots and stripes and yeah. stuff. The jaguars and leopards would literally have yeah. just spots. Very, very pure spots. Too would have spots. This yeah. is more stripy. <laughs> it's it's kind of a, a random yeah that really i mean they're just spikes, yeah. spots and stripes kind of blended all the some, other so nicole says some kind of a cat right i can see that how you would guess that I so have that pattern. i'll give you a hint this one belongs lives in the ocean it's a marine mammal show them how thin the fur level yeah. the fur layer is yeah, yeah so as far as you know a, a cat be a little bit fluffier right, right? So this is how Oh, that bird. It's not thick. Uh, Renee says a seal. Yeah, go. good job, Look guys. How thin that is. There's not much hair there, and it's very kind of coarse when you go one way. It is a seal, so this is a harbor seal. And one of my favorite things about them are not, not necessarily the hairs, but he thinks on the front. Ooh, whisk the whiskers on seals. <laughs> whiskers on seals and tarantulas. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> These are so cool. I love if you go to the zoo and you they just sit and watch the seals, you'll see them just zipping around their habitat. And sometimes they swim upside down and they'll even swim with their eyes closed. And then they can get through those tunnels. Yeah, they have an they obstacle course. Yeah, they zip right through, eyes closed, <laughs> and everything. And it's because of those whiskers. They're so sensitive, or vibrissy is the, the fancy word. <laughs> so they're so sensitive, they can feel vibrations in the water so they can sense fish. How many fish are there? How far away are they? Am I gonna run into anything like that? So they, a lot of um, seals actually get eye issues and some of them get cataracts and they'll be blind, but they can still survive because they can use these to find their way around, find their food. So 
pretty amazing. <laughs> I think Sue whiskers are pretty amazing. What do you guys? Pretty cool? Whiskers on Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's stuck in my head all day. <laughs> all right, my next number seven. What is it? Mm. First and foremost. Hmm. What part, or I should say, what part of the animal do you think it is? Mm. Kenneth says it's a tooth. Nice. A tooth. Anyone else, I guess? Yep, Nicole. Yeah. You probably have seen this because mm -hmm. he uses a lot. <laughs> You're right. It is a tooth. And I like how you said tooth because it is just one tooth. You remember what animal that tooth comes from? It's obviously got to be a big one. <laughs> mm -hmm. whale, whale. Whale. Yeah, whales are going to be big, but. This is a land one, so a whale is a good guess. Absolutely, <laughs> big. <laughs> yes, it is an elephant. Nice job, it's an elephant. Oh, yeah. Nicole, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <Get ready. Okay. laughs> Between the two of us, I'm blind up close. <laughs> I know, I got that fixed. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is the elephant tooth, and I just find this fascinating that they literally. How, let me ask you, do you guys know how many sets of teeth you get in your lifetime? How many sets of teeth do you get? So when we're babies, we get a set. We lose those. Right? And then we get another set as adults. And then if you're really bad about taking care of your teeth, your teeth fall out and you have to buy a third set. <laughs> right? Two. So two, right? You yep. get two sets. Elephants get six sets of teeth in a lifetime wow and they don't lose them like ours so ours when you know we lost our front teeth they just kind of fell out right and a new one came in and took its place this is kind of like a conveyor belt so what you see here above the line if an elephant were to smile that's all you would see is this top part right here all that would kind of be below the gum line so that's what's rooted into their mouth and holds that big tooth in but as their teeth get worn and aged, like this part right here, you see it's really kind of flat, more flat than the other ones. So this is the old part, and that would just chunk off, and another, and this part would kind of push forward and replace it. And so they literally move forward, so it chunks off, another piece replaces it, and that gets old and worn, that chunks off, and replaces it. So eventually they get, do that kind of like the whole tooth until it gets replaced about six times throughout their life. That is pretty cool. Can, was, can you imagine that would save on dentist bills if we could do that? Seriously. Right? That is pretty cool. Well, you know, you know, you can think about it. They have to, right? Because elephants are plant eaters. And that's all they do is they sit and eat and they have to eat several hundred pounds of food a day. So they wear those teeth down pretty quickly. So they definitely need their teeth more than we do, which is why they have that cool adaptation for letting them have those, those big teeth. And it helps them to yeah. live longer too, yeah. because they actually, yeah. you know, if they didn't have enough teeth right. that were, you know, sharp enough to grind up that grass, yeah. they wouldn't be able to eat to survive. So, yeah. and that's usually what happens when they get to the end of their life. If they've gone through their whole six sets and all those teeth are just so worn down and they can't chew anymore, they end up moving to like marshes where the grasses and stuff are softer and they can still eat a little bit, but eventually they do end up dying because they can't eat anymore. So elephant teeth, pretty awesome. Another cool <coughs> elephant Ooh, teeth. Use those muscles. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the people don't realize that the elephant's tusk is also a tooth. It's just kind of a modified tooth that grows out from actually their, their front. <laughs> Can you pass yeah, that's what yeah, right here. <laughs> That came right too. <laughs> or the full version showed off better than I. <laughs> you, you want some hands? Maybe are you gonna clap for me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that tooth right here. So that's just this, that tusk is just a long version of that one. <laughs> well, not a version of that one, I should say. <laughs> there we go. All right. 
What do we answer? Oh, ooh. Oh. I forgot. <laughs> Nikki, what'd you forget? Oh, I forgot the, the bio facts. Sorry, I can talk about it. Okay, go All for right. it. What is probably the most, I have to say, it's probably one of the most misunderstood animal. A lot of people think they're just scary and there's, you know, stories written about them that, you know, they give them such a bad reputation. I mean, there's stories, there's movies written about these animals because <laughs> they drink blood. Oh, Renee says bat. There you go. Right. That's I can guess that bats. one really quick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so vampire bats. And I had a little spell I was going to show you. And I forgot. <laughs> it was from the last day. So yeah, I think their spit is actually the fascinating part about vampire bats. Because their spit, so they drink that blood and they go up to sheep, cow, chicken, goat, whatever, that's sleeping, it's warm blooded and sleeping, and they can sense where the blood is closest to the skin, and they make a little bitty cut, and they lap up the blood, and that spit gets into the, that wound that they made, a little cut, and it keeps the blood flowing. So they have something called an anticoagulant in it, which means it doesn't clot, and it keeps flowing, so they can keep drinking, and it has a little bit of an anesthetic in it, which means the animal doesn't really feel it, kind of numbs it a little bit which is pretty nice, right? <laughs> so just their spit alone, and scientists are studying that, and they've been able to make medicine, synthesize medicine based on that vampire bat spit to help people that have had strokes and heart attacks. I think that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Super cool. That is. All right, you want to grab my number five? Okay. <laughs> I thought you would. Oh, good. Well, all right. Okay. There you go. All right, number five. Number five. Number five. <laughs> One of my favorite animals, but the, my favorite part about them is how they eat. Can you guys guess what animal? You guys have seen this so many times, probably. <laughs> my favorite part is their personalities. There you go. Do you need help holding the lid open? They don't like to stay open. More than 30 months. Which one? <laughs> oh, it's Squish. Have you guessed it yet? Not that I can see the chat, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you have this, guys. Here we go. He's squishable. But we don't oh, want to squish him. Let's see, but what that true? <laughs> this right. is King Tut. Yep. Anybody know what type of snake he is? <laughs> I think it's the snake already. Let's see. Where are you coming? Are you comfortable? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have met Mr. King Tut before. What do you think? His name is King Tut. And he's he's a local. He's a native yes. around here. <laughs> so Eastern King Snake. Yeah. So these beautiful <laughs> patterns. Local. And then, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> he is a he's a limp noodle. He, he really, really is. is. I'm like, <laughs> most snakes will hold themselves up, yeah. and all of it. He's he's actually probably um pretty cool because we've done some really interesting things because you've had some kind of neurological issues. Yeah, he actually gets acupuncture, yeah. guys. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a snake getting acupuncture? I know, and it helps him. It does. It has really helped him a lot. Yeah, he gets so little needles. Cool. Yeah, poked around his back, yeah. and it. Helps improve his feeling. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so my favorite thing about snakes, I love talking about, is how they eat. Just their mouths. I think they're fascinating. Most people don't think about snakes <laughs> having teeth, but they have lots of teeth. And well, if you notice, which direction are the teeth facing? So here's his nose, right there. So they face towards the back of their mouth, their teeth, their, their throat, I should say. So once you go in, they bite on, so you can't really pull out. So you're kind of stuck in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, so they have a lot of teeth too. So they have a couple rows on the top, and then they just have the one row on the bottom. It's not just those big fangs that are right. Nope. 
Exactly. <laughs> and depending on the size of the snake, you know, obviously his aren't going to be this big. <laughs> this is from a python. But my favorite thing, cool, is if you guys feel your jaw right here, go ahead and put your fingers right there and then open and close your mouth. Your mouth. So I'm, ooh, I lost my mask. <laughs> How do you deal with a mask on? Because <laughs> you can feel pretty solid, right? So they can actually, they have a special kind of a bone in their jaw that they can drop that lower jaw down and extend their mouth. And then their bottom jaws aren't even connected. So they have kind of a, a ligament that goes in there. And so they can actually separate those. And they use these to kind of walk their food in down their throat. <laughs> yeah, isn't that so they can eat something that's the same size as their head. Could you imagine? Trying to wrap your mouth around and swallow something the same size as your head. No, not hardly. Yeah. Another, cool. another cool thing is there. Um, do you guys see uh, how he's sticking his tongue out? Well, maybe. Hey, this way. <laughs> no, you don't want to be lit. Okay. So you see how he's sticking his tongue out? Yeah. There's actually a hole there. Yeah. He, he doesn't even open his mouth. Yeah, he doesn't even have to open his mouth. And he can still sit the entire world around him. <laughs> How convenient, right? If you guys have any <laughs> questions about King Tut, go ahead and put those in the in the Q and A. <laughs> Is he getting comfortable? It takes yeah, a while. Now he's, yeah, now he's wrapping around. He's got two of my fingers. It's like, That's not people. It's a handcuff. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, so cool, cool, cool. Yes. I think it's awesome that they can find. I love that they can find, catch, kill, and eat their food with no arms or legs. Yeah. I mean that's that's crazy. That's pure amazing right there. Yeah. yeah. And then the look scales. Look yeah. at the scales on his on his underside. That entire strip right there. I mean, that's that's a scale. Isn't that crazy? And his top is so different and it's it just helps them move and grip along whatever turf he's on. Yeah, I think that I use the, the scales on the bottom are kind of like fingers helping yeah. crawl along and grasp onto things. <laughs> like I'm gonna grasp you. <laughs> he has no muscles. No. <laughs> he's like me if I were a snake. <laughs> I don't know. He's got he's got a pretty good little well compared little to other snakes. Compared yeah. to other snakes, but they get like little have. Like Scoot, she'll like just shoot yeah. her whole, you'll, you'll be holding her like a foot away from the camera. Yeah, and, and she can... reaches the camera from yeah. like this far away. So it's like, no, bring me close. Yeah. Bring me close. It's like, I don't have that muscle time on. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Picture. So why does he move a lot? <laughs> well, right now I'm pretty warm. So he wants to kind of stay on me and get to my warmest spots, whether it's my armpit or my <laughs> whatever it may yeah. be, my wrist. Um. Also, he's just checking stuff out. He's yeah. really comfortable. Yeah, so comfortable. if he wasn't comfortable, he'd be, you know, yeah. tight, you know, trying to hide, trying to, you know, get away from me pretty much. But he's exploring, hanging out. Tut yeah. is a very, very good program animal. He is. He's <laughs> very curious. And like I said, he's comfortable and he's used to people. So yeah. he knows he's safe. So he's like, oh, I'm just going to check things out. This yeah. is a new environment. I'm gonna check it all he's out. Right there. <laughs> Aww, he's so cute. He really is. He's still probably one of the cutest snakes. Him and um, the yeah. um, ball pythons. So adorable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> right, we're talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Talking dot. Yeah, nice cut. One of my favorite things is the king cut. <laughs> <laughs> How old is the snake? Oh boy. I always forget to ask and look that up before I come in. He's I think getting he's up there. there. Yeah, he's. I don't um, know why 13 jumps into my head, but. but I mean, like we said, he does, he gets acupuncture. He's um, a, a royal snake. He's a very good program animal because he's yeah. so used to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he's been with us for quite some time. Yeah. And I think he came, we got him from another zoo that had him as um, an ambassador animal too. So he's been around people his whole life. But he's trying animals. to get through. His knot. He's tying himself into a knot. Um, he's just dark and hot. How that's gonna work? Yeah. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I just want to know. 
<laughs> so to answer your question, we don't really know. Sorry. <laughs> but they can they can live. I mean, I can't they live in their teens or twenties? I think so. Yeah, I would think so. Because he's, he's on the larger side. Yeah, it's just just look at this. He's, <laughs> he's literally he's tying himself in a knot. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, tut. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so i'm gonna well, let him go back, back up <laughs> yeah but that does make it easier to get in the <laughs> yeah the bag when he's like usually oh but yeah i don't know what it is no you gotta put your head in there we go <laughs> there we go <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't want to slam it. All right. That was number five. Number four, it's not an animal, but it does help save animals. And I just think that's pretty cool. Jeez. Oh, so I know what they are. You should know. I'm certain every one of you have one that has one like these. <laughs> yeah, this particular <laughs> one. So what are they? Not so many buttons on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Caroline's has GPS. Yeah, in there. You have it on your phone, right? You have GPS in your phone. And these are just rugged smartphones. So these are smartphones that are very big and very kind of heavy duty because these smartphones are given to park rangers in Africa. And our zoo and um, we work with other companies or um, groups too, they created an app called SMART. I know I've talked about it before. SMART, capital S, capital M, capital A, capital R, capital T. <laughs> in spatial monitoring and reporting tool. Nice. <laughs> so I gotta remember that. Yeah, first and try. Basically what that means, it's an app. It's a free app that you can download and they put it on a smartphone. And they just make sure they're the heavy dude because rangers take these out in the field. And as they're walking around in Africa or anywhere in the world, actually, and they're looking for signs of animals or signs of poachers or hunters or legal hunting, or anything that will help them keep their areas safe. And so as they're walking around, let's say they trip on an elephant poop. <laughs> oh, I had a trip because it's kind of hard to miss because it's big. And they will, oh, hey, an elephant has been here. <laughs> put that in, and it takes that GPS point and lets them know. And as they're walking around and doing the patrols, they put all the information in here. And when they take, come back to their office, they download that information, and it makes a map. And it tells them, OK, we saw all each other. So we have the big square here. That's the range. <laughs> Other than any range parks are the square. <laughs> Well, let's say they saw all these signs over in this corner over here. There really nothing over here. And I saw like, a lot of poaching signs up here. Are they going to spend any time down here? Or should they spend their time up here? Right? It's going to tell them. They're going to see it visually. Like, oh, I need to concentrate my time on there and not waste my time over here. So it's helping to save animals. And they're more effective at being able to help save animals from poachers and other animals or any anything like that. So. A smart app. It's so pretty cool. Mecca wants to know, can you cut it on? Um, no, these are dead. <laughs> yeah, those are older prototypes. Yeah, these and... were well used in Africa. So we, <laughs> we, um, we actually have staff that goes over to Africa and we teach them how to use the app and we give them the phones too. And so these yeah. have been well used. You can see this one was obviously <laughs> dropped. A <laughs> few times. <laughs> But what's why we give them the rugged version of a cell phone. So yeah. you can't just give them your everyday cell phone and right. here. And we're we're they're constantly updating the technology right. and finding yeah. easier ways to make yeah. it accessible yeah. for the rangers. So and it's cool that it started in Africa because our, our director had the idea to uh, what's the best way to protect the animals? How to they how can you visualize your range and, and, and know what's the best way to protect it? And so they came up with an app. And so now it's being used all over the world for a lot, not just in Africa. Um, I think they're going to start using it in, to uh, do research on polar bears. Um, they use all, all kinds of different animals all around the world. 
and it's really been helping to save animals. Who would have thought a phone could save animals? That's pretty cool, right? One of my favorite things to talk about, but <laughs> even more favorite. That's number three. Milk does. Yay. You guys hungry? <laughs> so open your snack. Let's see. I guess. Mm. It's nice and shiny. Yeah, it is. Yeah, look at that. Wow. <laughs> so many Nicole's been <laughs> good job. It is giraffe poop. And it's been shellac, so that's why it's nice and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not eating it because I'm one of my favorite foods. <laughs> so I'm not eating it. But I just find that fascinating that a giraffe, this 2,000 pound animal, you know, 16, 18 foot long, tall animal, this giant animal, helps poops, <laughs> poops, <helps, helps>, <laughs> you know, the poops inside the milk this. And to give you an example, yeah. like I, I have sheep at my farm and they literally have pretty much the same size poop yeah. as a giraffe. Yeah. Which is crazy. Sheep and yeah. goats and giraffes pooping. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool. They're so good <laughs> digesting you know, all the food that they eat and breaking it down and digesting it and chewing it, putting it in their first stomach, bring it back up, chewing it again, <laughs> chew the good, and then they swallow it and it goes through the rest. They have four stomachs to help them digest and get every ounce of nutrition out. And so that's why they have such tiny little poos. <laughs> But I think it's pretty fascinating. Oh, yeah. All right. Number two. Don't have to borrow my number one. Get your suit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know we did leave the door open. Yeah. All right. As you guys know, I'm probably known. I am a bird nerd. So, of course, I saved birds for last. My favorite <laughs> fact about birds. Are bones? I don't know if you guys can be able to see. Oh yeah. Oh, we have a flash. Oh, let me get. Oh yeah, I got cell this. Phone. Get cell phone. I got this. Your flash, your light. Let me be able to see. Beep, beep. Oh, maybe hold on. Where is it at? <laughs> there it is. Oh, you got it. There it is. Look at all those air spaces. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <There it is. laughs> like, I'm moving your way. Yeah, okay, there, there, there we go. There we go. There we go. It looks like spider webs. Yeah, it really does. And that's the inside of the bird bones. And so this ginormous animal, this is a stork, a American stork, and it probably stands about where I am right now. So it's a big bird, and that's a big beak. This is probably about a foot long. And it weighs next to nothing because they have all those air spaces in those bones. And we call them kind of hollow. But they're not truly hollow. They just have a lot of air spaces in them. Why would you want air spaces in your bones? What do you guys think? Hmm. Why would you need to have all those air spaces in your bones? Does it help you breathe? <laughs> no, that was me. That was totally me. <laughs> Caroline says to be able to fly. Right, to weigh less, to weigh less. right? To weigh less and be able, able to fly. Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to weigh as little as possible. And so there are some birds that their bones don't have all those air spaces in them. And those tend to be your diving birds or your non flighted birds, right? Because the diving ones need to be able to go down. And of course, your flighted, your non flighted, your, your ostrich, your emu, they don't need to fly so they can be as heavy as they <laughs> So they can be up a couple hundred pounds. And so this bird probably, uh, I couldn't even guess, I wouldn't even guess how much they weigh. But a bird, big bird like an eagle, you've seen like they probably weigh maybe seven to ten pounds, and that's it. They really don't weigh much because they have super light things. And I wish I had a scale <laughs> to show you just how light that is. I and mean, it really is nothing to it, which is pretty cool. All right. Did she say she's when she's coming? Still nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're on their way. Well, we do have. Well, actually, how about we do this? So we're sure. waiting for our last friend to come. My favorite, my number one favorite. Go ahead and put in the chat what your favorite animal fact is, hmm. and we'll share. Let's see what yours are. While we wait for them to come. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I texted you too. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anybody want to share their favorite animal fact? Something just fascinating that you, you heard about and you thought, oh my mm. goodness, that was amazing. That's so cool. In likes butterflies. butterflies? Renee says koalas. 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 Yeah. Foxes. Well, what about what about um foxes? What's so I know they're cute, absolutely. <laughs> but what's so fascinating about them? What is the one thing that you love about them? And grizzly bears too, right? What is the, the one thing? Why do you like them? Mm. Turtles and foxes? Well, okay. That's an interesting combination. Yeah, I know. <laughs> foxes. What is it about turtles that you like so much? What's your favorite thing? <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> Dogs are loyal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Most well, you know, <laughs> unless somebody else has food. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are you, you said, um, can I see? <laughs> can I say cute? Horses and horses. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We got going for an H theme, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you like foxes because they're cute. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Turtles are playful and like to beg for food, like oh, puppies. I have room for turtles that will. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. They see the food. I've got your little um, spotted turtles. They're so cute. They're like, like tiny little dinosaurs. They look like to me. And yeah, they're like swimming up. It's like, ooh. It's a good one. Genevieve's favorite animal fact is that Dalmatian puppies are born without spots. Huh. Did I know that? I don't know if I knew that. Did you know that? And I have. I think I might have remembered Some, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I think about it. Hey. Oh, yeah. Oddball and the 101 yeah, Dalmatians. Yeah. But I don't remember. <laughs> wow. Well, Genevieve, thank you for yeah. making us think. Yeah, huh? We're going to go look this up. That's and... really cool. I want to see the newborn baby Dalmatian puppy. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Do you guys know that um, not all of the fluffy white sheep that you see are born fluffy and white? So there are some breeds um, that are born with black wool oh, okay. and they'll actually grow out of that black wool oh. and have white wool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You really what yeah. is your favorite, <laughs> Megan? What's your favorite? Oh, I can't. Yeah. I, I don't. Um, you just what? I know it's not hard um, to choose just one. <laughs> um, so I, I'm like, oh, it was hard just doing 10. Yeah, so many I could just say. I, don't know. I guess the whole the elephants trunks uh have forty thousand over forty thousand muscles in them. Yeah, that is. Good. And that they can they're they can still pick up a, a penny or a single blade of grass. Yeah. So that's just it's amazing. Well, that trunk is pretty cool. And I had a thought about it, I would put on my list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this is coming soon. But anyways, I'll talk about Ooh. what is so favorite about her. Genevieve says uh, flamingos get their color from eat from the shrimp they eat. Correct, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I know. I thought that was cool. A lot of yeah. the, our pink birds and a lot of animals get the color from the food they eat. That's yep. pretty neat. All right. Do you guys know that flamingos have a um, kind of a distinctive scent? You can smell flamingos. Anytime I walk by a flamingo, I'm like. I can smell the flamingos. <laughs> I thought that was always the mud or something. Yeah, <laughs> is it really? Like, I might be the food that you see them, but it's just yeah. there's a very distinctive smell. Anytime I've worked with flamingos in the past, and there is a distinctive smell. Becca <laughs> 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 <Mega> says, ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad smell. <laughs> it's not a bad smell. It's just kind of a, it's a flamingo smell. <laughs> All right, so my last favorite animal. The reason I love to talk about them. Anybody want to guess? Disease. Anybody want to guess what bird this comes Ooh, from? That's a good. That's a good tip right there. Look at those yeah. feathers. Yep. My hands are shaking. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can smell them. They don't take showers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they try. Yeah, well, they they, 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 they try do. to clean they themselves. themselves. Yeah, they do. They clean themselves, so they kind of clean. Leah, yeah. you're right. It is a bird. Yeah. Anybody want to guess what kind Another of bird? bird? Just kind of giving up a hint. So this right here. Yeah. 
super quiet. Ah, Arif says owl. Hawks and owls, yeah. Yeah. It looks hawk. like a hawk, you're right. But the way you tell a hawk and an owl is owls have soft feathers. They have like an extra layer. Their feathers look very fuzzy because they have this extra kind of layer on the tops of their feathers. And so when they flap their wings, all those extra layers. <laughs> the <laughs> it just fluff. Head, it muffles any noise the air would make. So if you ever heard like a duck taking off or a goose or a pigeon, when they flap their wings, they make a lot of noise. But an owl, because it's got that extra layer, it breaks up the air. And so when they flap, it's silent. They make zero noise when they flap their wings. And I just find that a fascinating fact. And that little bridge right there, I just learned, we used to say this was part of um, what helped make them silent, mm -hmm. but that is actually their braking system, part of their braking system. So as they're... It's like out, in airplanes. They, know, yeah, so it's like, so as they go down, they don't want to stall out, otherwise they would just drop. And so this kind of helps them to kind of slowly, you know, go slower and slower and not just suddenly stop <laughs> and then drop to the ground. Nice. So it's part of their braking system. With cool. that extra layer of feathering is what keeps them super silent. There's a really cool, and even, I mean, you can just feel them. So whenever you see a feather and you feel it, it feels really soft. It feels like velvet almost. It's an owl feather. It's really cool. And I think I hear my friend coming. Guess what you can guess who it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that silent flight is pretty amazing. That's probably one of the fascinating things I love to talk about. And like I said, there's a video. If you Google um, BBC Senate Flight, they put the series of microphones in. Hi, Ness. You're good. Go ahead. <laughs> so they put a series of microphones down. You're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. And so they had a caravan falcon fly across, <laughs> a pigeon, and the barn owl. Fly across those microphones. You can bring her out anytime. Okay. Um, and uh, okay. <laughs> and when the pigeon and the peregrine falcon flew over, it made so much noise. And you could see and hear it. But when an owl, you no know, noise whatsoever was picked up. So pretty cool adaptation. They're silent flyers. You remember what bird we have? Who is our, who is our favorite owl? Oh, does anybody remember her name? Yeah. <laughs> ah, Tara, where'd you go, Nicole? Nice. Nice. Yeah. Had to bring her back out for our last one. She's like, oh, you worked all yesterday. She did. Oh, ouch. <laughs> not done. That's okay. I'm not good with names either, Leah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so Tara's going to come out, and she is our barred owl, B-A-R-R-E-D, owl. I got this. You type it? Nice. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, she's got that beautiful, when she comes out, you'll see her, she's got that beautiful barn. Oh, apparently, I don't have it. I can't spell the name. B-A-R-R-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. There, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, and that silent flight is pretty... Cool adaptation. So why would they want to be silent flyers? What do you guys think? Why would Tara want to be a silent flyer? And remember, guys, if you have any questions, you can put them yep. in the QA for us. We'll be happy to answer them. So why does Tara want to be a silent flyer? She's looking at herself fencing, again. Right? Nope. <laughs> She's like, I'm so beautiful. So should we have a computer over? where she's looking at and she can see herself. It's <laughs> 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 all right, so for hunting, absolutely. So she's silent flight so that she can sneak up on her food, but because she also uses her sense of hearing to hunt, she does not want her wings to make a lot of noise. And so that way she can hear her food as she's hunting too. So it works two ways. All right, Miss April, you're welcome to Chat about her if you want to. <laughs> what is your day. favorite? What is your favorite topic about owls? Oh. That you like to talk about? 
So what are you talking about? The, I just the did fringes the on the wings. Yeah, I just talked about okay. the, the silent. Today one. we're talking all about favorites, our favorite facts and favorite. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Our um, favorite things, and you got to sing the song. Yes. These are the favorite things. <laughs> oh, Nikki did a whole dance. Yes, I did a dance. Well, good thing y'all have already done it. Um, I would probably say my favorite thing about Tara or owls is the asymmetrical ears. Oh, yeah. Ear holes. Yeah. I always try to uh, figure out what she's like listening to whenever she <laughs> yeah. turns her head. I'm like, yeah. which ear is that? Because I can never remember which one's which. Yeah. But yeah. So what does it mean to be asymmetrical? So that know. means they are uneven. All right. Here's so, that. I mean, I, my ears are probably not actually even. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have, all have a yeah. I have glasses, so <laughs> I feel like I look crooked sometimes. I have like, that like, feeling too. <laughs> I look crooked? No. <laughs> But those are meant to be crooked. Yes. So, so one of them is probably like up here, and then the other one is down here. Yeah. And so that this helps them uh, capture sounds from either up above them or down low uh, to be predator or prey. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Because as I said, they hunt by sight and that hearing. Really, really good hearing. And their sight, again, their eyes don't move. Right. So notice anything she wants to see, she's moving her whole head for. <laughs> what, she's looking at. what do you see, Miss Tara? Did I move my hand? Yeah. <laughs> do you guys have any questions about Miss Tara? Do you guys remember why, um, what she's missing and why she's missing it? Mm. Let's see if you guys remember about what you remember mm. about Miss Tara. She's been looking around a bit. Okay, her feet. Yeah. Because you can see on my feet. Leah says they're nocturnal. Nice, right? <laughs> That's all right. I don't know how to spell either. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for uh, spell check. Yep. <laughs> I saved my behind many a time. All right. Yeah. What is your? Um, that's kind of cool. Let's let's do that. What are your favorite things about owls? Who? Whoever them. No. Who? Everybody out there. Anyone? <laughs> anyone? You guys? Anybody out there in virtual land? Anyone? <laughs> I told you mine. Ooh. Mecca has a question. Does she have a baby? Mm -hmm. She ever had laid eggs or had she had is babies? not in our care laid any eggs. Um, but she was full grown. So this size, whenever she came into the zoo. So she could have before she came here, but it's mm -hmm. probably not likely. Oh, yeah. Let me she's missing her eye because I got in the correct. Is that correct? Um, I think it, maybe she did get some infections. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just really scratched yeah. up, and we know she couldn't see very well with the yeah. bad eye at all. Yeah, I think she had gotten like scratched it or did mm -hmm. something because she had her eye when she, we first got her, and she had it. Mm -hmm. She had it um, probably until I want to say seven, eight years ago, mm -hmm. and then I think she scratched it on something, and it started getting infected and bothering her, and then she decided to take it out because mm -hmm. it was causing her pain yeah i can't remember if it was her that had eye drops i may be thinking of another animal that had to have eye drops so many times a day and they removed the eye it might have been her yeah because when i first started working in education she had an eye she had two eyes <laughs> Anything else you want to learn about Tara or share about Tara? Mike says, oh, <laughs> yes, agreed. Yeah, she's so pretty. She's a rock star. She is. Up close, she has like the tiniest little whiskers. Yeah. Yeah. Underneath her beak, I find them when she's molting. Oh, like, oh. oh, man. Yeah. It, it looks perfect. like feather eyelashes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love, yeah, all those feathers are on her face. They, and they're feathers, they look like whiskers or hair. But their feathers are just different kinds of feathers. And yep. She uses those to kind of sense her world. Mm -hmm. So Leah says, "Poor Tara." Yeah. <laughs> so she and she's really coped well with you know having that one eye. She gets around her habitat and she yeah. does she's what she wants. <laughs> um, yeah. So Mecca wants to know what food does she like. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so <laughs> we have seen Tara catch wild lizards, so I would say she <laughs> likes those. Um, Specialty. But, yeah, mainly oh she gosh. gets main, mainly two types of food, either mice or chick, but on like special days, sometimes we'll do um, like a wrap for Christmas. Oh, um, so her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> she does have a birthday. Oh, yeah, like, we'll make Ooh. up a birthday for her. <laughs> I think we've had, we have April 2000. Uh, 1998 or something. Oh my goodness. Yeah. She's an old lady. (laughs) Yes. And the wild though, they could eat like crayfish and snakes and squirrels. Um, Tara, even with this one eye, she's really good at catching catching (laughs) food. Um, We'll put it in her water dish and she'll go and grab it. (laughs) She's still really precise with the one eye she can grab. Um, something upon flying to it. It's really fun watching her do that too. Uh, I, I love watching birds of prey and their enrichment items. <laughs> and how he manipulates things. Oh yes, <laughs> he manipulates humans as well. Yes, I'll just <laughs> add that in there. <laughs> we did the. Um, we like to fill a muffin pan with like food in the the cup, and then put a tennis ball over it because it fits like perfectly. And so it allows them to work their food, uh, food muscles, <laughs> their feet muscles and leg muscles and like pull the uh, tennis ball out of the muffin pan. Uh, she didn't really put a lot of effort into it, but <laughs> Braveheart's like a pro at it. Yeah. And it's fun to watch them. Mm-hmm. Just the holding the tennis ball mm-hmm. in this place. <laughs> Just so stepping on it yeah. and then like <laughs> moving the leg and throwing it down. Yeah. Me too. Oh, yeah. Any other questions, guys? I'm not seeing any. All right. Thank you, Tara, for joining us for our last two classrooms. <laughs> Thanks, Tara. We were our last guest. You saved the best for last, of course. Oh, <laughs> yummy. Yeah. Well, bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tara. Thank you, Tara. Did you guys have any other? Cool animal facts you want to share? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Leah says, Bye, Bye Tara. Tara. Nice. Um, asked how old she is again. Um, okay. So, 98. So, so she to, came to the zoo in 2002. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, she came to the rehab center with her injury in 2002. So, she's been at the zoo for almost for 19 years. And so she was an adult when she came into the zoo. So we have no idea how old she was living in the wild, how long she was living in the wild before she came to the zoo. But we know she's at least probably 20 years old. And but she could be older. So we're not 100 percent sure. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. See you in a bit. <laughs> Bye, Daryl. Well, Nicole says, thank you so much for making these video classes. We've enjoyed them so much, and we'll miss y'all. Aww, thank Aww. you, guys. I'm going to miss you guys, too. I had a lot of fun. You know what? I learned a lot, too, because I, yeah. I, I get pretty creative <laughs> coming up with some of these programs. So I learned a lot to kind of research and do a lot of them. So I had fun. I don't know about you guys. I did. But all right, guys. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us and coming back week after week. We are going to miss you. But the zoo is open. You can come visit us. Um, yeah. We have a lot of cool opportunities. Um, we've got the uh, Creature Connections. So every Thursday, the second Thursday of every month <laughs> during the school year, you can join us for those. You'll meet Leslie. I'm probably going to pop in every once in a while. And then our friends from the aquarium have some cool things to share. So a lot of cool stuff there. We um, That's why I'm getting busy right now. Megan and I are getting geared up for summer camps. Woohoo! We're also starting an overnight camping here at the zoo. Oh, yeah. And if you want to learn more, just go to our website, nczoo.org. And uh, maybe we'll see you at one of those things. That would be kind of awesome. <laughs> I'd love to see some, meet the people that uh, have been coming to these. So, yes, please. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Stay safe, and hopefully, I'll see you in the future. Bye, <laughs> Bye friends. <laughs>